People are asked to me why didn't anything happen during 2014, 2015, during the Blood Moon Tetrad phenomenon. And I asked Bart Biltz that the other day. Um, he, I, I called him up. <laughs> He's a friend of mine. He wrote the foreword to my book. And I said, why? And he said, sometimes there's a four or five year gap. Uh, there are warning signs. So let's discuss some of the signs of why things happen exactly on that time and why it's a warning, an omen for four years later. So let's look at some of these other blood moon eclipses that have occurred over the years and, and compare and contrast why sometimes it's a wait and sometimes it's spot on. So let's look at the, the first bit of information from the Bible, which is Genesis 1. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and seasons and days and years, and let them be for lights in the dome of the sky to give light to the earth. And that is how it was. And God made the two great lights, the larger light to rule the day and the smaller light to rule the night, and the stars. And then Jesus explains it this way in a very interesting way. He, uh, he, they come to him and ask for a miraculous sign. And he says, red sky at night, sailors delight, red, red sky in the morning, sailors take warning. And you're thinking, what? Well, that's what Matthew 16 is talking about. The sailors know that if it's a red sky at night, it's going to be great for the next day. It's going to be great weather. But if it is red sky in the morning, you better not go out fishing that day because you might lose your boat and your life. So he comes back and says, you can't even read the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation is asking for a sign. It will certainly not be given a sign except for the sign of Jonah, which is Jesus three days in the ground. And so with that, he left and went off. So let's look for patterns and discuss that with you. Comets are normally a four-year warning sign, and blood moon eclipses, the tetrads, are normally a sign of that exact time frame. But all are cosmic signs, and all have a meaning for Hebrews and Jews in the modern era. Just keep in mind, red is Edom, which is danger in most cases for Jews. They know that. So let's look through Sukha 29a and just look at the omens and see what they think. So apropos, the fact that rain on Sukkot is an indication of divine rebuke. The Gemara cites several related topics. The sages taught when the sun is in, is in eclipse, it is a bad omen for the entire world. It is taught that when the heavenly lights, i.e. the sun and the moon, are eclipsed, it is a bad omen for the enemies of the Jewish people, which is a euphemism for the Jewish people, but they are experienced in their beatings based on past experience. So if it's bad for the Gentiles, it's bad for the Jews because they get beaten up. So just keep that in mind. Uh, when the sun is eclipsed, it is a bad omen for the other nations. When the moon is eclipsed, it's a bad omen for the enemies of the Jewish people. It's due to the fact that the Jewish people calculate their calendar primarily based on the moon, and the other nations calculate based on the sun. When the sun is eclipsed in the east, it is a bad omen for the residents of the lands of the east. When it's eclipsed in the west, it is a bad omen for the residents of the lands of the west. When it's eclipsed in the middle of the sky, it is a bad omen for the entire world. If during an eclipse the visage of the sun is red like the blood, it is an omen that the sword, i.e. war, is coming to the world. If the sun is black like sackcloth made of goat hair, it is an omen that arrows of hunger are coming to the world because hunger darkens people's faces. When it is similar to both, then blood, that is sackcloth, it, it is a sign that both the sword and arrows of hunger are coming against the world. If it's eclipsed upon its entry soon after arising, it is a omen that calamity is tarrying to come. Tarrying. Now, please note that. Four years or five years. If the sun is eclipsed upon its departure, at the end of the day, it is a, an omen that calamity is hastening to come. And some say that the matters are reversed. An eclipse of the early morning is an omen that calamity is hastening, while the eclipse in the late afternoon is an omen that calamity is tarrying. So just notice that there are hastening and tarrying, and that's interesting, and this is from Sukha 29a, so you can go out and search this on Google if you want to, and be aware that they've been studying this for thousands of years, and they kind of know sometimes these signs hasten, and sometimes they tarry. It's just the way things work. So Rabbi, Rabbi David Kimchi, notice the Radak from 1160 to 1235, said that when there is a total eclipse, the moon appears dark. However, when it is only partially covered, it appears like blood, symbolizing the fall of the wicked. In other words, yes, according to some, a blood moon is indeed an omen, but an omen of the downfall of the wicked. So let's cite all the eclipses that have occurred that I care to cite, which is in 1492, Columbus miraculously found the Caribbean. And then as soon as he came back, he hit the Ides of March storm, um, and he was driven into Portugal, not Spain. And then finally, when he arrived in Spain, the blood moon eclipse, uh, Tetrad, occurred in 1493, 1494. Then there's the 
Jubilee year, according to Judah ben Samuel in 1517, which is 23 years forward. Then another 23 years, it's 1539, 1540, another eclipse, tetrad, but not blood moon. Then 1949, 1950, the war ended, the 48 49 war, and Jerusalem was declared a nation state, and the war signified, uh, or rather the tetrad signified the war was over. And so in 67, 68, we knew that we would get the Temple Mount because there was the tetrad coming. And then in 2014, 2015, nothing happened. But sometimes it's a warning of a future time, sometimes it's tarrying, as, as the rabbi stated. So now let's look at something that's very interesting. We're going to cite Columbus. This will be intriguing for you to note. So in 1503, Columbus had a shipworm epidemic on his ships, and it destroyed two of his four ships, forcing him to land in Jamaica. And the indigenous Arawak people were there for six months feeding them, and they were getting sick and tired of feeding them. So they stopped uh, giving them the cassava and the fish. And so Columbus people went and stole food, and it was getting kind of heated. So Columbus had studied with someone else about the blood moons that he saw when he left, and so he had talked to um, these great, uh, I think it was either Galileo or someone else that had studied the blood moons, and he had said there would be a blood moon eclipse three days later on the night of February 29th of 1503, and he predicted it. So he went to the chief, the Arawak chief, and he said, this is going to occur, and it's a sign that you need to feed us if it occurs. And guess what had happened? And so uh, this modern science was used against the Arawaks, and, but Columbus escaped and came back with more news of the new land. So now let's move forward into our time frame and look at these blood moons. So once again, 331 of 1866 kicks off this last time frame of 152, 153 actually years until 2018, 2019. And that is an intriguing time frame of blood moon eclipses, especially the super blue blood moons of that time frame. And here's that perfect sign again, just so you can see what's going on through this time frame and how things hit exactly on the mark other than the tetrad of 2014, 2015. Nothing happened there. Then I want to cite one more time, Donald the Trump came into office on 121 of 17, at 70 years, seven months, and seven days, and then he will become, uh, his, he will have been in office two years on 121 of 2019 when another uh, blood moon eclipse occurs in the last of this pattern of 10. And then keep in mind that he was born on a blood moon tetras day, tetrad, or blood moon eclipse day of June 14th of 1946. And it happened in Israel, but not over him, but they're linked together. And so then let's watch for June 21st of 2019. And keep in mind, there will be no rapture on that day, and there will be no rapture that year. But I'm saying that based on my other video that you just saw, the, the third video in our series, you'll say sometime in late 2019, the seat of Satan will be ready to go in Berlin. And so the Antichrist could start to rule at that point in time. We're just waiting for that as we waited for Wilhelm to rule the first time in World War I, Hitler to rule in World War II based on the seat of Satan timing being rehabbed and ready to go. And then now the third time in the Third World War. Keep in mind, Jared Kushner and Trump are attempting to divide Jerusalem into three parts. There will be part A that the Palestinians would have, parts B and part C. Some would be run by the United Nations and some would be run by the Israelis. It's a bad plan and if he divides Israel, he will have his nation, the United States, divided. So now let's look at, that was the blood moon side of this, now let's look at the comet side of this. So in 66 AD, Halley's Comet came over Jerusalem. Um, the philosopher, the historian Josephus, wrote that it looked like a Ramphaea sword, a long judgment sword, a fierce judgment sword over Jerusalem in 66 AD. They were conquered in 70 AD, a four-year warning. Let's move forward. The signs and the prodigies which preceded the taking of the city, a star hung over the city like a Ramphaea. The comet continued for a whole year. Halley's Comet doesn't stay up in the sky for a year. Just keep that in mind. And it was very bright. Um, and then other weird things happened. They celebrated the Feast of Unleavened Bread. At the ninth hour of the night, the sun shone so brightly that they, they thought it was bright day. It continued for a half an hour, which is interesting. This half an hour time frame is the end of, um, or the beginning rather, of chapter 7 in Revelation, that half an hour time frame of waiting. At the same time, a, a feast, uh, a cow, was brought up and brought forth a lamb, a calf, in the middle of the sacrificial system. 
which is bizarre to, to birth during your sacrificial time frame. It's, it's, it's wrong. The eastern gate of the temple weighed, I don't know, probably weighed thousands of tons, and it took 20 men to open and close. Well, it opened up in the middle of the night by itself. Just, just the wind would blow it open. And one of the rabbis, uh, Zechariah ben Edo, said, um, oh, I've read this in the book of uh, Zechariah, um, oh, I'm, I'm blanking on the book, it's, it's, it's probably Zechariah 11, 1, and it says, fires will consume your cedars because your doors are opening. And so um, we know that he knew that the temple was going to burn about 70 AD. Um, and all of these things happened. Also, the angelic host said, we will depart hence from the city in 66 AD. So all the huge signs were occurring, and then it happened in 70 AD. So let's look at Halley's Comet and see the four-year pattern. Halley's appeared in 1910, then 1914 brought World War I. Halley's appeared in 1986. 1990 brought Desert Storm. Let's go back then, 1835. Then um, it brought the Opium War in 1839. It happened in 1758. 1762 brought the Anglo-Spanish uh, War. 1682 brought the 1686, the Child's War, the Russo-Turkish War, the Siege of Buda. 1607 brought 1611, the Kalmar War, the Salt War. Four-year signs, four-year signs. Halley's appeared in 1066, and there was the Norman invasion. Halley's appeared in 1222. Genghis Khan invaded Europe after that. 1456 it appeared, and the Ottoman siege of Belgrade occurred after that. So there's usually a four-year sign on Halley's Comet. And then there was this great comet of 1577, and I don't know what that means. So that is the end of the link between comets and blood moons, and either a four-year sign or a, an immediate imminent sign.